So I got a lot done yesterday and I feel good about where I'm going, but I, right away this morning, I gotta get the rest of the wood that I'm gonna use for the exterior of this build. And what I'm planning on using is walnut. I wanna use walnut, American walnut, and, and American cherry along with the barn wood. So I've gotta pick out the walnut. It's gotta be just the right walnut. It's gotta be extraordinary walnut in order to match this build. There was a lady, uh, an older lady that showed up here and this was her husband's stash. He passed away and she wanted to see it go to a good home. And so she was aware of Western Heritage Furniture, my company here, and she wanted to, um, to make sure that uh, the wood was used in a proper manner and really respected. And so uh, we purchased the wood from her. We paid quite a bit for it. It's, it's actually really great um, exotic wood that uh, you don't find too much anymore. You know, these trees are, are almost all gone right now. And, and the ones that are left are, are in people's backyards. So they, don't, they don't typically cut them down. But this was uh, a couple of giant walnut trees that they harvested 40 or 50 years ago and uh, had milled up. So these are seasoned, they're beautiful. The trees were probably four or 500 years old when they were cut down. So we're talking about the time of Columbus, you know, these were saplings. So there's a lot of history here and a lot of Americana. And I, I feel quite blessed to have the opportunity to work with this wood, uh, this piece of, of living American history. Hair? What's going on? Play video games. I wasn't playing video. I was. I heard it was that scheduling downstairs. That was uh, the uh, breakfast burrito. I... Anyway, see, uh, what's on the agenda today? Uh, well, we've got a couple Teton pieces. They're supposed to go out today. Uh, about hopefully by four o'clock, you'll be able to take some pictures of them. Sounds good. And then Tim's been asking about Christopher. Right? What am I supposed to tell him? Oh shoot! Just tell him the truth that, that he only had them for that one day. Good enough. Cool. All, All right, right, let's get back to the video games. It was uh, um, scheduling the. Uh... I got a piece of three-quarter plywood out here that I'm going to be using for my substrate. I cut this piece inside on the table saw, but the piece I'm designing has an unusual shape to it, basically a belly on it. So I need to go and cut that belly out by hand. So I'm going to be using this jigsaw and it's got to be perfect because this belly is going to be exposed right on the face of the piece. I like the way the top came out. I'm liking the shape. Everything's working perfectly. Now I got to get the finish going on the steel. The steel has to be just right because it's so much a part of this particular style, this particular design. I've got to get the finish on it just right. So this is going to take me a few hours. It's going to eat up some of my precious, precious time on this build, but it's extraordinarily important. All right, so I'm, I'm texturing and working on the finish for this piece. Um, and these three inch corner posts that I have on here uh, came from the factory with a heavy, heavy mill scale. And so they're taking a lot of extra time and energy to get the mill scale off. I got this side done right here and, and it's looking good, but now I got the rest of the legs to do. So just labor intensive. All right. Hey, Mike, Tim. Yeah, listen, I got a little window right now if you're available. You're up there? Okay. I'm going to I'm going to take off right now. I'll be up there in 5. All right. Cool. Later. I'm about to head up to the Gold King Mine. This is one of my favorite places on earth. It's a funky little ghost town owned by Don Robertson. He collects antique trucks and semis and automobiles and it's got chickens and goats and all kinds of crazy things happening. There's even a sawmill from the turn of the century that I just love. So I'm about to head up there. This is going to be a fun part of my day. My wood shop is located in this crazy little town of Jerome, Arizona. It used to be one of the biggest towns in the state. It was a copper boom town known back then as the wildest, wickedest town in the West. Now it's one of the smallest towns, population 400, and one of the biggest tourist attractions in the entire state. Start here, 
on this hillside with that train rolling by. Mike, how are you, man? How are you? How's this? How's this? It is a nice day. It's beautiful out here. Mike's a good buddy of mine for a long time, and he's been spending the last three or four years collecting some of the best wood in the state. This is a, this is almost a disease that creates this beauty, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, it's a nature, it's the nature of life that the difficulties and the challenges actually bring out the character. Yeah. This is something that's not right with the tree that the tree's dealing with and fighting, and this is the most beautiful part of this tree. Yeah. How you doing, Tim? I'm doing good. Good. We're filming, uh, making a crazy piece of furniture, and we're filming the uh, build of it. And I want to use some local Arizona woods. Cool. And uh, the one guy I know that's out there in the woods finding all this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Mike. Mike. Well, that's the reason it's called alligator juniper right there. You see those alligators leaned up against the wall? Did you see the alligator in my shop? No. Look at that. See, that's what I'm talking about, that's the flames. Oh my gosh. And you're willing to mill this up and we can take a look at it and compare the two. Yep. I like this. I knew you would. <laughs> There's about five, I got about five little pieces. This is a 1949 Nash. This is actually a wrecker, a truck for picking up uh, broke down vehicles. This is a very, very unique model though. I, I think maybe there's two or three or four on earth. What this is, is this is actually an automobile, a car, and Nash never did make a pickup truck. But the dealerships needed a wrecker and they would have to go and buy a General Motors or they'd have to go and buy a Ford wrecker to go pick up their Nash breakdowns. Well, they went to the Nash company and said, we need our own wrecker so that when we show up to pick up one of these Nash cars, we can show up in a Nash wrecker. So this was one of their cars and what they did was they just expanded it and put it on a truck chassis. And you can see right here, here's a good example. This is a three inch extra piece of metal that they added to get the fenders to push out wide enough to cover the truck chassis. You can look at it right down the middle right there. It looks like an airplane or an automobile and it's one of the rare Nash wreckers. This is a 1949 Ford pickup truck. Now this would have been what the Nash car dealers would have had to purchase. They would have had to buy the F3 to go out and, and pick up the, the cars and use it as their wrecker until Nash developed and built their own custom wrecker. Mike's about halfway done slabbing up the burl, the, the mesquite burl, and Don shows up. And uh, uh, great to see the guy. He's a friend of mine for 20 some odd years. And he's showing off his 1928 Studebaker Man, race know, car. Uh, you guys are all from England, but you still might have heard of Parnelli Jones, yeah. famous race car driver, one of the most famous in the world. This is a picture of him. He heard about this race car I built and he wanted to see it. So. There he is, sitting in my race car. Oh, nice. So I don't think anyone else in the world has a trophy like this no. to hang in the shop. Wow. I didn't know about He's that. He's 82 huh? years old. I did, I wanted something completely unique to, to, to the Southwest, but also to the Verde Valley. I mean, this is, comes right out of Clarkdale, it's Clarkdale. five minutes away. Yep. Well, let's, uh, let's work a deal. Let's make let's make a deal happen. Yeah, I need this. Yeah, I need it. Only about 400, 500 bucks I get out of those. But I'll give it to you for 100 bucks because you're going to do business with me in the future. Mike, I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, right. You're going to have to see this piece when it's all done. So I got the walnut milled down, and what, what I'm working on is I'm doing a radius on the front of this project, and that's uh, very, very risky because it's time consuming. And if I don't nail it, it's not gonna translate really well. It's gonna, it's gonna uh, c come across all wrong. So I've gotta get it exactly right. And what I'm working on is I've gotta create the radius that I need out of the walnut. Well, the walnut wants to be straight. It came out of straight boards. I need it to bend. So I'm using a radius buck that we have in, in the shop here. It's not the right radius. It's not as strong a radius as I need. But what I'm hoping for is when I glue this up and I bend it around this radius buck that we have, I'll be able to then take that, that finished product and bend it just a little bit more so that it, it will fit the tighter radius 
that's on the front of this project. One of the visions that came to me last night that really, really was clear was I want to do the, the front of this piece, the kind of the centerpiece, in, in a radius leather, a, a hand-dyed saddle leather. Never seen it done before, to do it on that curve. Um, so I've got to, I've got to come up with some new technology and new ideas and invention here. Again, uh, highly risky with such a short amount of time to build. Now I need to wet the leather and create my stitch groove so that I know where to put the stitches. All right, so I got that detail pushed down in there. Now I'm about to use the stitch groover uh, to create a groove. This is a cutting tool that's gonna cut a groove in this leather, allowing for the stitch to sit down flush. Um, this is a... Uh, a bit nerve-wracking because this is a one-shot deal. This this tool, if it uh, if it doesn't go perfectly straight with this, is going to create a groove and ruin this piece of leather. This is our leather distressing rock machine. It's the only one I've ever seen. Then we put it in our rock machine and we distress the leather in a very organized and efficient manner. So you can see the fine tuning, the accuracy of every single throw creates that perfect random distress. It's working out, it's working out. Thank heaven it's working out because I got no time to fix it if it didn't. But the slides are working, all the hardware is working, and now I can start putting up and mocking up these panels and start seeing what I see in my head, what I saw in the middle of the night, the vision of this piece is now actually coming together. And to be honest, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty cool when you have something that is nothing but a vision and it actually starts to materialize in a three-dimensional world. This is where all the reward of the creation of this piece comes together. Cool. Well, I just got done tack welding the infrastructure together on this piece. There's a lot of moving parts and there's very, very little room for tolerance. So I've got to rough tack weld it together and make sure all the components fit. And what I've got here is I've got this side working. I've got everything clearing. The tolerances are, are there. And, uh, and so now I've got to take everything back apart, do all my finished welding, and then put this back together again. And the day is running away from me, so I've got to get back to work. I'm cruising along. Everything's coming together. I'm feeling really good about this piece. I got to tell you, it, it is surpassing my expectations. And then wham, I get approached by my shop foreman, Adam. He tells me that uh, there is very little chance that this order is going to get done in time to get on the truck and head out and get delivered, which means we're not going to make payroll which is a hard pill to swallow. Well, this door right now, but when it's in place where this cat hits the face frame, the door is glued up so crooked, it's sticking out like 5 16 3 eighths of an inch on this side. I don't know how to fix that without building a new door. So, he asked me if I can jump in and help, if I can contribute what I've got to help get this order out. Well. It's my guys, it's my shop, and of course I'm gonna jump in. But I've gotta abandon my project. So I'm in the middle of this. I'm, I'm, I'm all in 100% and me and the guys are working together to find a way to get this project complete and get it on the truck so that it can get delivered in time and we can get paid. Doesn't matter how much you run this off of this plane and this right. is still going up here. We have a, a piece that we're building that has a unique uh, construction method that uh, very few of, of the team here have, have worked on before. Matter of fact, I may be the only one that's ever done this particular style and we're running into problems. Well, I've got to jump in and figure out why the door system, why the, the hinge system that, that we're working on is not working, it's not functioning. It is, it's a, pretty much a disaster. We can put so a shim on that front side. Yes, a little fine shim with the glue and a biscuit up in there or something, maybe even do them both of them if they need to pass.
Okay. So you have a plan for that? What we're trying to do is we're trying to get the whole door and the leg to open up in order to add and access all the available space. It's a unique design and, and it's, uh, it's got a lot of function, but it challenges the form, it challenges the, the, the hardware that we have. And so what I've got to do is I've got to take a skill saw by hand and miter a piece of that, that leg off so that it will open and close and it won't catch. We're, we've got a binding problem right now. And so we've got to get that bow cut out and, and level so that these doors will come together and everything will just be perfect for delivery. I got Mo uh, lined up on how to overcome the challenge on the doors. And now I've got to go over here and work with the guys on, on the final fit and finishing these pieces. Now this is, this is one of the most important parts of what we do. Before any piece goes out the door, we go through it with a fine tooth comb. We make sure that every crack, cranny, crevice, every piece of this has gone over and works is flawless and functions perfectly. And so I've got to get with the crew. We're over here working. If these pieces don't get done, before clock out time is, which is an hour ago, these guys are working over. If we don't get done tonight, there's no way we're gonna hit our deadline. So the whole crew has come together and, and everybody's just, just working their butt off to get this done and, and, and doing it with, with a, a bit of cheer and laughter and, and dedication. And I, I gotta tell you, I am a blessed, blessed man to have such a great crew. Well, we just about got done. The guys are just doing the final little details over there. I'm going to jump in my truck, run down the mountain, and get these boys some beer. Hey, Tim. Long day. It was. It was a tough one. Yeah, I appreciate you putting your project off and helping the guys get all the uh, all those pieces out. They, they got them out. We're going to make payroll. These guys are freaking superheroes. They, they really busted butt today and got this done. I'm, I'm proud of them. They sure are. Well, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are going to give me an extra two days to finish my build. Two days? But it, but one more day. One more day. Day three. There was only supposed to be two days, but after all the craziness yesterday, I've been allowed another day. Spent most of the morning figuring out what all I got left to do, and I can tell you, man, I am under the gun. I do have lined out today Joe, who is our engineer and a, and a top craftsman, and he is going to be helping me on one of the most intricate parts of this build. So that's going to help out, but I got to tell you, I am going to be buried with work, and I am going to be moving and shaking in order to get it done in the 12 hours left that I got to do it in. So, stay out of my way. You can follow me around with the camera, but I'm not doing any on-camera interviews today. Well, that's gonna be too big. Now it's at, uh, this way. Really, Christopher? I dig that. That's a great idea. Glass and sideways. I'm gonna steal that. Oh yeah, perfect. Ten seconds, Tim. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. I think you took an extra second there, Tim. I made it. I made it. I'm done. All right. Why don't you go wait in the break room on the sofa, and we'll call you when we're ready. Whiskey River, take my mind. Time for the judgment. Dave, 
Tim, congratulations. Thank you. That was the longest three days of my life. It felt like three months. I've never seen someone grow so much gray hair in three days. So. Yeah, whatever. I noticed that there's only one stool. There's not a panel of judges? No panel. We've got a surprise for you. The last surprise cost me $100,000. <laughs> Meet your judge. You've got to be kidding me. Tim, it's very nice to see you again. Hey, do you mind if I smoke now? Now you know why he wasn't able to help you the last few days. Christopher Robin, while he is a bona fide rock star who builds his own guitars, for the last 25 years, while he's not on stage, he's been actively participating in interior design and custom woodworking from Martha's Vineyard all the way to San Francisco. Wow, qualified. I could have used your help on this build. Well, I, I did try to give you a few pointers. Well, now is the time for the big reveal. I call this piece, Raising the Bar. Tim, you were tasked with the challenge of creating one piece based off of the six previous pieces that you did on the design show challenge. And I know myself and the viewers are extremely excited to have you walk us through how this process even took place. Well, the first build, of course, was the campaign desk. George Washington had one out in the field. Well, he was elected the first president of the United States. So this is the presidential desk. I built this desk shaped like the White House. Do you guys remember the dining table? We're talking about a combination of steel superstructure and walnut. Well, that's what this piece is. I use steel as the main body, and a majority of the wood is walnut. Now, we're talking about the walnut that we saw early on that I picked out. This walnut has such a beautiful coloring, so much character and potential, and it's coming alive on this piece. And the steel, I took a long time to grind this, had to work my butt off to get it to here, but by adding the bluing and the antiquing, what it is is it's like a musket burnt bluing, I've created a finish on this piece that is unbelievable. Well, another build, the most painful, the sofa, the couch, ouch. It was supposed to be 78 inches. This desk is 78 inches. Everybody remembers the fan build. Wow, what, what a challenging build. Repurposing materials. Well, on this piece, I've repurposed barn wood. Wood that was used in Fort Verde right here in the valley. And I've incorporated that repurposed wood in the panels of this desk. You guys remember a couple of days ago, I was trying to bend those slats around the, that uh, radius buck. Well, guess what? It came out beautiful. The, the radius is right, the walnut looks fantastic, and you combine this leather with it, perfection. That final piece, the most expensive piece of furniture I've ever built. Well, if you look at this, this side of the desk, this is the driver's side of the desk, there's a lot happening over here. It's beautiful. Hand forged handles, hand built. And then you've got the walnut and the barnwood detail, the walnut and the leather detail. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. But what you would never suspect is these corner details around the pencil drawer are actually drawers themselves. These are hidden compartments. So within here, you can access a space that no one would ever suspect. And one more, hidden compartments, my specialty. Remote activated. So, what do you think? I loved all the incorporations that you used 
of all of the different pieces. The one thing I'm, I'm missing was in the design show challenge, design number two, you designed a bar. And I know you've got some alcohol that's hidden in there, but I really missed the actual bar aspect of it. Good on you. One of my favorite builds also. Chip and I uh, really knocked it out of the park with the uh, bar build. And uh, I saved the best for last. Hidden further in this drawer is some high-tech detail. This is a fingerprint scanner. This activates the second build. This piece is called Raising the Bar. This is an extraordinary piece of furniture inside an extraordinary piece of furniture. What we're looking at is a bar that rises out of this desk. This is a quilted cherry. This piece of wood came to me miraculously right in the middle of this build. And you guys remember I went up to the Gold King Mine and I visited with Mike and we, we slabbed up that burl, that mesquite burl. That is what we're looking at inside these panels. That's the detail here. Came out unbelievably beautiful. The combination is flawless. Makes for one heck of a bar. And we've got drawers inside this unit so you can access these. On the other side, you've got your monitor and a couple of Bose speakers. Tim, I may be a rock star, but you are a wood star. That is something I want in my house. The fact that you used modern combined with Americana and Victorian and being from the Northeast, I have seen so many amazing collections of colonial uh, pieces that this is, it's taking the leather, it's taking the reclaimed barwood, it's taking the, the modern metal and technological aspects of things and turning it into something absolutely magnificent. And I, I, I you've hit this out of the park. I'm very impressed. Congratulations, Tim. Beautiful desk here. I think the judge decided that you are the winner, and although there was nobody else in the competition, it was hard for you to lose, we put together a prize package for you. Excellent. Excellent. What is this? That is actually the, uh, the invoices and the, some, of the, some of the bills for, let's see, the wood, the Well, metal, wait a minute. This is all the receipts of the all the materials in there. that went into this build. Yeah, I, yeah. I, we, it wasn't free. I got to pay for this? We had... You are one of the owners of Western Heritage, and uh, this is what we Every do for time a I win a furniture build contest, it costs me. Started here on this hillside with that train rolling by. Crazy dreamers pulling songs from the sky. That train keeps rolling by Head west, here in the west Was the best Just thinking about the next sun